drivers today know what it feels like to win at this racetrack. The other 35 want to. We are glad to have you with us, so sit back and enjoy it with us as the world's greatest stock car drivers head down to the green flag at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Hello everybody and welcome to round 20 in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. We're going to make a really risky move there, but I think it'll pan out okay for us. Yeah, it does. They were just sitting there and we were getting so much momentum, I wasn't going to slow down. I figured we can try to shoot it and see what we get, and we got it. Now we got Scott Speed though digging up underneath of us. I think we'll be alright. I wanted to make sure I was plenty clear before I tried to slide down in front of Scott there because I did not need a bumper in my left rear quarter panel going into turns three at uh, Indianapolis. <laughs> Gonna get in behind Sam here. Uh, yeah, so we come in here 11th. We started 25th. Um, we come in here 11th though in the points. So we're back in the chase hunt a little bit uh not, I want to say comfortably, but it at least feels good to be in the top 12. Um, Casey Mears, I think, is going to try to get under us. Side, side. He is going to try, but not succeed, so that's good. Um, one pit stop will be required. The question is going to be, you know, tires or fuel, which is going to come first. I have a feeling tires. Um, we need to go at least 32 laps to, you know, know we can at least make it to the finish before we pit on tires if that's what our situation is and odds are we're going to probably be pitting due to tires um yeah it's this is another one of those races where we haven't won at yet hope to eventually casey it's gonna screw up my turn too oh yeah it screwed me up Clear all around, all clear. Yeah, before my spotter even got a chance to tell me Carlo, I cut Paul Menard right off. I was not going to lose another spot. Outside. Well, they're getting dicey up ahead of me. Got to be careful. Still out there. Clear. Oh, we slid Outside. up a little bit. Paul gave us some slack, though. Carl Edwards is now poking under me. Golly dang, man, we just cannot catch a break. We're struggling again. Another, another, uh, another race where we're subpar mid, mid, mid team, mid, uh, mid pack teams. What I meant to say. Twenty eighth. I mean, we'll see what happens. I ain't giving up on lap five, but. It doesn't feel like it's going to be one of those it's our race type of deal, I feel like. You can kind of pick those up sometimes early on. I mean, sometimes like last season when we were making our run in the Nationwide Series, like some races didn't feel our way, but, you know, we seem to have like luck on our side. Like the right things were going to happen for us anyway. So, I mean, not luck, but fate, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, nine, things... Nine tend to pan out in our favor. This season, we haven't really had that element to this season, so it's been kind of hard to, to think that it might get better during a race when it starts off a little bit rough. Uh, so, but we'll see. 
trying to stay optimistic here. I thought I heard somebody crashing. Gonna make a move under Sam. In turn, Carl's gonna make a move under me. No. Nope, 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 nope. Sit. Don't move. Alright, we're good. We're good. Just saw cars spinning around and coming at me. I was trying to go in reverse and avoid everything. Good lord. Alright. Pretty sure that was uh, Mr. Edwards. Caution number one. We're going to let this just play out real time first. Watch this. Oh, man. All right, so this is where it all starts. Kurt Busch tries to squeeze the middle between Scott Speed and Jeff Burton. Um, I thought I heard crashing in my in, in my uh, audio there, in my headphones. And uh, boy, were we ever right. Oh, my gosh. Jeff just... Impl or explodes off the wall there. Um, Terry's in it. Scott's in it. Kurt's in it. Robbie Gordon's in it. Here comes Kyle. He's going to hit Terry. It looks like. I didn't catch the end of this crash. Um, yeah, it looks like he is going to hit up. Wow, he's going to get Terry up on his side. Uh... Kyle's sideways. Oh, no. Regan. Yeah, he's... Oh, wow. He's popping a wheelie. Kyle Busch is airborne on top of Elias Sadler. Jeez. That was a pretty big crash. That was bigger than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Dave Blaney. John Andretti. Are they going to avoid it? Wow, they just missed it like to see that from Dave Blaney's point of view. On board with Dave Blaney. Dumb luck. That was a close one. One last look. Uh, this one's from Terry Labani. Yeah, just kind of all of a sudden. And then he got... Oh, wow. That was a big one. You can't even see out the front of this car. Like, how do you know where you're going? Come on, Terry. Alright, and then a little further along... We're not going to use the free cam because we kind of already know what's going on. Carl Edwards gets into us just a tick. We move up a little bit. And then... He goes to push us three wide, going into the short shoot. Wow, he comes right up into me. Almost right there, it looked like. There might be a different angle we're going to look at. But yeah, so then we catch Sam. Sam kind of straightens us out. And he kind of gets instant karma on Carl for us. Because it takes Carl out. Almondinger's all over my rear end there. But I don't think... He, oh yeah, he does. We do make a decent amount of contact. I didn't think he spun for some reason. It's been a little bit since we've seen this replay, or seen this crash. So we're around, Carl hits the wall, and then we're just sitting there praying no one hits us. Thankfully, they don't, so. Um, but yeah, I do need to look at that one more time. This is the beauty of free cam. So, so we're going into turn t uh, three here. Carl's driving down there. And I thought he got into me, but it looks like he I was mistaken. So he just tries to sneak down. And then, let's see, watch. So we're still following, like, the turn. Carl's, it's hard to tell from that angle. We got to backtrack it a little bit. I mean, well, that kind of right there it looks like he's kind of coming up. But it's hard to tell if I'm coming down from this angle. So let's... Take this over here. We've been doing this a lot lately. 
I kind of like it though because I can kind of examine things with you guys and get your opinion. So look at the angle that we're approaching this turn. We're pretty parallel to each other. Carl is not. Let's see. Let's take this. Whoops. Lock the camera. Let's take this frame by frame here. So I'm not really going much lower, but see how he's following the black there? So he was going to just looks like follow the black in the track there. I'm not really going low, but I'm, I'm kind of holding my line where I'm at. Because at the time of impact right there, I'm still pretty parallel to Sam. I know we're really digging this one apart here. I'm just trying to trying to make sure I'm going to be mad at Carl Edwards for a reason. We have a very deep history from last season. I'm still fairly parallel with Sam, so I'm going to say that's Carl. Um, because I don't. Yeah, let me look. We're actually maybe just a little bit even straighter than Sam, and he's turning. And we're still there, but now we're not because obviously we're getting turned around. So. Yeah, I want to say that one's on Carl. So Terry's return to the Cup Series here today. Uh, I think he ran one other race this season, but um, drawing a blank for some reason. But he's out, followed by Jeff Burton, two chase drivers, Kurt and Kyle Busch, and then Regan Smith and Elliot Sadler. They're out as well. Um, Mark Martin is our leader. Oh, come on, Scott. You're killing me, buddy. You are killing me. We're probably going to lose draft. Wow, we drove in there really hard. And now Scott's like, hey, I'm fast. No, it's because I bugged up the turn because I was desperately trying to cling on to something from Hornish. And by something, I mean draft. Well, we'll go high then. If you're going to go low like that. Clear all around, all clear. Oh, this car is just wicked tight. After that incident. We repaired it, but we're just tight. Well, we weren't too tight there, but they're gone. Clear all around, all clear. If we can get a caution where we don't have Scott Speed in front of us, we might have a you know fighting chance to hold on to some draft. But yeah, we got robbed. The car's starting to feel a little bit better, but then again, we don't have any draft around us, so I, you know, that could be what I was. Not accounting for when I was trying to, trying to draw my line was the draft. Maybe having to make my breaking point just a tick earlier or something like that. And also, I mean, the draft isn't like super speedway necessary here, so I mean, we could catch back up to some of them probably. It's just it really helps when you have some draft. Also, actually, at the time of this recording, probably not when you see this, well, depending on how everything rolls out, it's, uh, I'm driving, I have a brace on my right hand now for uh, carpal tunnel, so it's a little hard to grip the wheel with that hand right now, but we should be all right. Shifting <laughs> at a road course will be no fun, but we actually have the, a couple of those coming up, so... We got uh, Walkton's Glen and Montreal. So that's uh, yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Next race is at Pocono, though, and then it's uh, then it's the Glen with the nationwide cars. I believe that's the schedule. We're up to what thirty fourth. Now we do have slightly fresher tires, which is going to help us get to our goal uh, pit-wise. 
to try and split this race up, just checking my pit strategy. Um, yeah, I just don't know what they're going to do, though, and that's the problem we've run into. It's bit us so many times. We, we game plan something, and they don't do what we thought they were going to do. Like, Infineon, or Sonoma, like, the pit stop, thought they were going to pit. They didn't. Um, I think there was one other race. I'm just drawing a really bad blank on it. Oh, New Hampshire. Thought they were going to pit. They didn't. So, I mean, we've been bit a couple times. So that's why, like in the intro, I said, you know, um, wait to see what their strategy is going to be. I mean, we kind of got forced into the early pit stop there. Uh, only because we got some damage from that accident. But, um, yeah, I just, I don't... I don't think we're going to have a race winning strategy come out of this whole ordeal, but I feel like we can definitely get a top 30, if not a top 20. And that in, in itself would feel pretty good, considering the circumstances. Uh, Mark Martin still leads. How far back? Wait, we're 16 and a half, we're 18 and a half now. We'd lost two seconds that lap. trying to also just even though we have fresher tires we can definitely make it I'm pretty sure to lap 32 it's can we go from lap 32 to 34 or 64 though um, you know we already have we already have pitted for tires now so that kind of isn't a good marker to go off of I'd say we want to get to like lap 38 39 probably before we would consider um, I have no idea. What I know what I'm trying to say. I just don't know how to explain it. Like, it would be the equivalent of the stint we're doing now between pit stops for tires. It would probably be like 39, 40, somewhere in there. If that makes sense. Hope you follow me on that one. Yeah, the car doesn't feel that bad in all actuality now. It's starting to really come in. Um, Robbie's a lap down, too. Forgot to mention that. Gonna try to make a move on Skinner. And not cleared yet, but we should clear him through turn four here. Dang, this brace is really digging into my thumb. Like, right between my thumb and my pointer. It's definitely not comfortable. I thought about taking it off for the race, but then it kind of defeats part of the purpose. Like, I'm not going to put my a video game over my own health. Like, I'm supposed to wear it for two weeks to see how it uh, helps. And if it doesn't, then it's surgery, so... Or a possible surgery, so... Um... Yeah, you know, it's on. They had me wearing it for a reason, so just dealing with it to the best of my abilities. If it is a problem, you know, the only tra the only series I see it really being a problem would be is the dirt series, because that one's grip your wheel, clinch your ass cheeks type racing. <laughs> uh, we may have to just sit out a few of those races so we don't fall behind on our on the schedule I have for editing and everything to make sure these videos come out when I say they will. Uh, 23... Tony has overtaken Mark. Great Biffle's up there as well. Now, one of the benefits of having the fresher tires actually is there's a chance we can stay out when they all go to pit by a few extra laps um, and we might you know we could possibly either a get back on the lead lap if we do lose a lap or b if we're close enough we could maybe lead a lap and if we're lucky a caution might come out and we can pin some cars a lap down um, and try to you know stay towards the front I feel like I feel like, you know, wherever you would place us in the field right now, 
we could probably stay consistent with them. I feel like we're pretty evenly matched with a good handful of cars. It's just we have, you know, a lot of ground to make back up from those incidents on, or well, the incident, I should say, on the early going here. We're not, we're not terrible. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a few cars directly in our sights that we can probably get in the next lap or two. John Andretti definitely is one of them. slowed up there. He was looked like he was trying to make a move on Michael and couldn't do it. Let's see, we're on lap 22. They'll probably start pitting around... Well, it depends on what their tire wear is like, but I'd imagine we'll probably start seeing a pit around lap 35, 36. Well, anyway, between 35 and 40. Uh, 28. So the next car would be Junior. He's four seconds up the road, though. not to run over Michael at the same time not get run over by John Andretti behind me. Michael's slow, it's just he's fast enough where he's being a nuisance. I think we can dive him here though. We're going to try it. Yeah, we got him. Yeah, we got him. Thank you, Michael. Clear all around, all clear. He's going to actually beat John Andretti on the outside. I think because we also came up in front of Michael. Alright, so... Michael better not be trying to make a move on us. He's right there like he's gonna though. How far up is now Junior? 4.6. Now we're gonna, we probably will actually be a little bit faster than them as we get to the second half of this first run because of the fresher tires. Um, I didn't even think about that. I mean, I don't think we're gonna be faster than guys, but well, Mark Martin's taking over the lead again over Biffle and Johnson, then Tony Stewart. I don't think we'll be faster than too many of those guys. Those guys are on another level. But, um, well, typically with the finish ratings, I've noticed guys who typically finish at the front of these races. So I've been trying to understand ratings a little bit more. Um, consistency, I guess, apparently, is like how fast you can continue to run those laps and whatnot. And so I guess that has an effect on their tire wear. So, and their numbers are super high. Like, Jimmy Johnson was the one who won this race, I believe, uh, I read, or I saw, um, very briefly, but I'm pretty sure that's who it was. His ratings are like 98 across the board, so he's going to be tough. Um, he's in third right now, so yeah, he's my prediction to win this race. Um, and I also don't foresee him having too much fall off from his lap times from start to finish. But guys towards the middle, they tend to have a lower consistency number, and they tend to fall off midway through a run and, you know, back. So I'm wondering if that is going to play a role in how we catch up with some drivers here. Um, I mean, they might have enough. They might have fall off where we can make up some time on the leaders too, but how much? We're losing almost a second and a half every lap. But we're gaining on the guys in front of us, so hard to say. I 
34.3. It's 50 second lap, so. <sighs> yeah, we've gained a lot of time on Junior. We're only three and a third now. We were 4.8. So we're slowly working our way back to our starting spot of 25th. When I say slowly, I mean slowly. Um, right in front of Junior, too. So there's Hamels right near Junior, and then it's another four second gap to Almendinger and Reagan. That's what would get us up to uh, our 25th spot. So I think as long as all the chips fall the right way, we should be able to come out of here with at least a top 25, I'd say. If not a top 20. I, I really believe we have a good shot at that. Um, I'd like to finish on the lead lap, ideally. But, like I was saying, you know, we, we could probably go a little bit farther, and we might get the luck of a caution or something um, through pit stops. Is... Let me see. No, Elliot Sadler's already out, so we won't have our capeless hero from last season to help us out. <laughs> trying to remember exactly what happened but for some reason I remember I think it was a late race caution and we pit and we had really fresh tires and they didn't and I, if I recall we were zooming to the front I think if we had a little bit more time we could have won but uh yeah Brickyard is one of those races that I do want to win the I want to win the Brickyard 400 so we have some time still before the road course takes over and we lose the Brickyard 400 but Let's see how we do here. Not like I said, not throwing it in the towel even after 28 laps when it doesn't look too promising. Jimmy Johnson still lead, folks. Um, you know we're let's see how far back. 39 and a half. So we're losing. Eh, Jim Jimmy's probably gonna be here soon, but he'll be pitting before that. So that's to our benefit. We're within two seconds, well, 2.05 to Junior, so we're catching them. Considering the start we had with the, you know, the crash and everything, I'm I'm okay with what we're at, where we're at right now. And, and to be honest, you know, I've accepted the fact that this season's just not going to probably be this type of season we wanted. I, my biggest goal right now is I just want to make the chase. If we make the chase, I'm okay. Like, especially now with just, it's kind of hard for, to drive the damn thing because of the stupid hand stuff, you know, putting that into account too, like, it definitely hasn't, I can't really, it hurts to kind of counter steer it, that's why I'm thinking we might have, depending on how things go, we might have time out of the dirt car because turning to the right kind of bothers me, um, when the, because it kind of rubs the brace that's there. And it just digs it into my skin, and it just it just doesn't feel comfortable. And uh, yeah, so I mean, just with that, and just with the radiance, just trying to get adjusted. Probably gonna have to figure out some new setups and stuff. You know, we're probably gonna just look at it as a successful season just to make the chase at this point. Um, I would like to get maybe one more win. I've never had a single win season in Cup, so I would like to at least get two. Trying to think if there's any tracks coming up that we have a pretty good advantage on. The only one that really comes to mind that I think we could fare pretty well at is well, there's two actually: Bristol and Martinsville. Um, I feel pretty comfortable with those two tracks. Um, what else? Well, Walkton's Glen, I think we could do decent. Um, Talladega, I don't have any hope for. Maybe Kansas. And uh, maybe, yeah, maybe California, Michigan too. Um, I think we have a good chance at Michigan. Actually, I forgot all about that because we ran pretty good at the first time we were there, and we would have probably won had it not been for, you know, all that funness at the end there when we got a little clip from Paul Menard and we hit the wall. 
It was Paul Menard, I'm pretty sure. 44, uh, 44, and I'm basically 50 seconds back, or 45 seconds back, not 50. Whew. Yes, it's like an, it's the draft effect, but it just feels almost like I'm arrow tight when I start getting close to somebody and I'm drafting. It's definitely makes me have to change up my line just a tick. Uh, yeah, we can get up to Denny. I want to send it under Junior, but I know that's a bad idea. The tires are still in pretty good shape, actually. So, yeah, I think we definitely can do this on one more stop. Let's send it down here, see what he does. Oh, he gives me the space. Thank you very much, Dale. Dale Jr. is a class act. He saw that we had the speed and just got out of the way. So that works out very nicely for us. Jimmy's got a pretty tight battle on his hands with uh, Tony. Here comes the leader. What? Who? What? We're 48-7. I need Jimmy to pit soon. So we can stay on the lead lap. What is it? Lap 34? They should be pitting soon. Like I said, I predict between 35 and 40, somewhere in there, we'll start seeing pit stops. So they're on 35 now. No. Yeah, I ended up slowing down just a little bit to make sure I can stay in front of them. I'm blocking. In the event a caution comes out, I want to stay on the lead lap. Okay, well, that didn't last long. Tony nudged me. Well, the benefit, I guess, is we'll be able to get some suck off these cars to help us maybe catch the other guys ahead of us. If I don't drive stupid, like I just did there. I'm also nervous that they're going to pit right in front of me. Nope, not that lap. Alright, so while we're a lap down now, that sucks. But we're at least in 28th. I think that car up there is Robbie. Yeah, it's Robbie, pretty sure. I'll check on the back stretch. Yeah, it's Robbie Gordon. So he's slowly coming back here. Go his second lap down. Looks like uh, Johnson and Stewart, actually. It looks like the two of them are coming to pit, so. Oh, yeah, there's other cars already on there. So we're now back on the lead lap. Who's that in front of me? Oh, it's Biffle and Martin, so no, we're not back on the lead lap. Two of the leaders stayed out. But they're not really pulling too far away from us. I actually legitimately thought they were like one of the back marker cars for real racing. So, like I said, I don't think our pace is too bad. Tired's still good for a little bit. So, I mean, we're going to try to hang on as long as we can. And hope maybe a caution or something comes out.
Who's this up ahead? Well, that's Tony and Jimmy. Dang, we're so close to being able to possibly cycle out here. Well, not really cycle, but you know what I mean. Come out in a spot where we could possibly get a lap. Uh, lead. Go 10 more laps, so ideally, if a caution was to come out, it would come out in like six, maybe seven or eight laps. And then they would kind of have some more tires and some decisions to make if they wanted to get some fresh tires and whatnot. And, you know, and if they don't pit, we would probably have a tire advantage. And I'll just come down here and try to get some draft. I think that's Greg Biffle. Uh, yeah, it's Biffle. We were 12th at the line last time. What are we at now? Should be top 10. Maybe top 5? We'll see. Yep, top 5. We're kind of hanging too on worn tires. So, I mean, had we had been closer to the front earlier, I feel like, yeah, we could have been fairly competitive. Yeah, we were actually fifth at the line last time. I just looked in my mirror and saw that I had trips. Uh, John Andretti and Brian Vickers behind me drafting. I was like, why do I feel like I'm going into this turn Outside. faster than I have been? It's because I had some giraffe from behind. I did not understand where that speed was coming from. Yeah, just let him go. Inside. Reed Sorensen will let him go. Yeah, we're just hurting ourselves at this point. We're not going to get a caution. Damn it. Alright, well, we're going to come down pit road then. Unless that gaggle of cars... Not even a gaggle, just that little pack. We're going to crash. But they're not. So we're going to come in. Down to pit road speed. Nothing like in an Indy car where we have a very big issue trying to get down to pit road speed in one piece. Probably going to lose our lap again, but hey, we, I mean, we tried something. And with 23 to go, I mean, at least we now have the um, insurance that we can make it to the finish. And clear. Okay, can't get on the accelerator then, I suppose. Like that. Alright, we're good. One more turn here on the apron and we'll be able to get back up in traffic. I see Junior. There's Joey. Joey's lead lap dog, pretty sure. Yeah, he's 13th. So it looks like we're going to come out right around about 30th. But our tires are going to be about seven or eight laps fresher, so we'll see if that can be uh, an advantage over the long haul for the remaining 20-something laps. I'd like it to be an advantage, but <laughs> we'll find out. Um, 
not really sure who's in our immediate range of passing. Um, it looks like we get to... I feel pretty comfortable in thinking we might be able to get to 25th. Um, maximum, I think, is probably 20th, if I'm being honest. I don't think we're going to do much better than that. But uh, we'll see. We were three seconds last time by behind Junior. We'll see where we're at now. I feel like we definitely closed in at least maybe a half a second to three quarters. And judges say we are not even close to what my prediction was when we came to 10th. So we're 2 9. I thought we were closer for some reason. The lap just felt really good, but not good enough. Actually, I could just check the real time. Oh, right. It's, it's, oh, Scott Speed's the one we were closing in on. That's why. He's the lap down. Leader is Jimmy Johnson by chunk, actually. So it looks like, just like in real life, Johnson setting himself up for an Indy win. And we are... We did gain about four tenths on Junior that lap. starting to get a whiff of that draft. I can feel it. So now i got to apply a little bit more brake on entering these turns. Just got to remind myself of that when I get any hint of draft from front or rear. Definitely feel us get a pull down these straightaways so much faster. I mean, yeah, look at that. The closing rate is ridiculous. I had to really woe it down. I had to dive down there. Like, I didn't think I was going to pass him, but I had to do something because the alternative was just run through him. Scott is very slow. Two seconds behind Junebug. This time by one eight, one seven, two seconds still. What? No change. I couldn't get back into the gas too quick there because we went down a little bit below the white line, and the car does not like when I step on the gas from down there. Um, Ambrose is the first car a lap down at twenty fourth. You can just line up turn four and turn two when, uh, through the short shoot and you hit it just right. Man, you feel like a champ. Such a good feeling. One and a half back now to Junior. Seems like, yeah, I mean, when we nail turns two and four, I mean, it makes sense. They are the entrance to the longest straightaways on the track. When we nail two and four pretty decent, we gain a good chunk. We haven't been consistent with that, though. And that's the problem. Who's ahead of him? Oh, that's my Skinner. And, yeah, Denny's seven seconds, so yeah. Uh, yeah, my thoughts of maybe a top 25 are pretty slim.
but I think we definitely can get Junior for 29th. Just running par for the course right now. The season's just been tough. So I appreciate everybody riding out and, you know, hoping for the best. <laughs> I mean, for the chase races, I am 100% going to do a deep dive and try to find some good setups. You know, we're not going to lower the difficulty, but we're not going to... If we make it, we're not going to squander the opportunity either. Um, I wouldn't expect fireworks at New Hampshire. But just because our track record there hasn't been so hot lately. Super Speedway at Talladega. Um... We don't do too bad. We're like, it's not that we can't run near the front or anything. It's just we get caught up in messes all the damn time. Whether by my fault or somebody else's. Primarily my fault. But let's, you know, I digress. I drove in too hard. Holy Ryan Newman. Clear all around, all clear. Heads up driving by Dale. I saw him stay high, and I was like, why is he staying high? Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome <laughs> that we got kind of a warning there. Because Newman's a lead lap car, so he's definitely got some speed under him. Just not Scott speed. Denny's seven and a half up the road, so odds are we won't see a soul for the rest of this race other than leaders passing us. That was a great turn four. Well, we might see Denny. We gained uh, six tenths on him that lap. It also depends. Is Robbie anywhere near him? No, he's not. So there is a chance we could catch him. Slim, but a chance. Let's see what we are this time. We are 6'8". When we were 6 tenths ahead of Junior. Alright, so now we're 6 even on Denny. 1.1 on Junior, so... We, uh, it'll be close, but I think we might be able to catch Danny for 28th. And then I don't foresee us catching Andretti. Who is that behind me? Clint Boyer. With him is David Stremme and Carl Edwards. I think Carl said he wants me to give him a hard time, so I gotta make sure I do that. Not saying the rivalry's back, but I'm pretty certain he was the one who turned me. Try to get down fast enough to make sure I can hold uh, Carl in line so he doesn't get past me very easily. Just to make sure he knows I know that he's the one who tapped me. Clint 
Flint's gonna scoot they under are. me. They are. We're gonna race Carl hard. Try to. Yellow's out. Yellow's out. You're clear if you need to clear. Clear. Correct and four. Wow. I thought it was for me. <laughs> that was crazy. Perfect time though, because we're going to need some repairs. And some fresh tires. We're going to just... I mean, what do we got to lose? I mean, we can only drop one spot, so... Why not? Caution number two. Kind of a... I'm going to... Predict a lead lap car, Matt Kenseth in this situation, going to pass Dave Blaney. Dave slows, gets caught, goes to wall. Pretty hard hit, actually. But that's all it was. But enough to give us a shot at uh, throwing some tires on this bad boy and seeing what we can do here at the finish. Maybe we could pick up a couple spots. So if I had to guess, somebody was probably a lead lap car at that um, was probably like Dave Blaney, you're going too slow, and probably just turned him uh, going into turn four if the spotter's location was correct. Because he is now out. Uh, well, there's the skid mark, so yeah, it looks like going in, he probably hey, just flipped him. Well, that could have been from us you're too, ready. but there's a long one right there. Um, Oh, this is gonna suck because we're gonna have everyone's right up on the wall, so we can't even get a jump. But we have fresh tires and a Outside. super slow restart. There we go. Now we can go. Carl, I'm sending it under you, buddy. Oh, I couldn't get there though. Robbie Gordon. He's a menace. He's so slow right now. That screwed it all up. Yellow wow, big crash. I see a hole. Oh, it closed up. Oh my goodness, that hole closed up. <laughs> wow. Okay, well maybe there's some luck on our side. I see more smoke. And where there's smoke, there's not always a fire. But there's a spun out race car. Oh man, that, well that's probably going to do it, but we're only a lap down, so oh, we're going to gain spots, 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 free spots. Where are we at now? 26. Uh, we should definitely be in the top 20. I really, I really think we will. Turn 2, Calamity Corner. So it looks like right here, Andretti, Logano, and Paul Menard, three wide, doesn't work. They explode. Two of them, now three of them are upside down. Um, we're, yeah, we're watching it from this view real fast, and then we're going to switch it. Menard gets upright. Andretti's on his roof still. It looks like, yeah, so Newman gets hit. Who comes back up in front of us? Oh, it's Clint Boyer. I want to skip over to here real fast to watch that. Oh, he got the grass on his roof. That flashbacks to the 05 500. Kurt Busch. I mean, it's a little cloudy, so we can't, or smoky, so we can't see it. But um, yeah, I just wanted to see it from that angle first. Let's go take another look at it where we can see a little bit more. All right, so here they come. All right, there they are. Yeah, I was thinking they might have been a little bit farther up, so I. I was hoping that we could get a top 20, but, well, you'll see that we're, we're wrong about that. But, um, yeah, so they're flying through the air, wrecking. Um, there's a reason we have, I have it at this angle, because I, I want you all to see how close this was, because we got a front row seat to it. Um, Denny got smacked there. Uh, yeah, so we're coming up along the wall here. It looks pretty clear, but then Stremmy, Newman, Edwards, Boyer, they all make contact with each other there. Um, we're going to, yeah, see, he goes flying, but watch this. So we just sneak in through that hole there, and it closed up. 
And Robbie had nowhere to go. Just drills Clint Boyer's rear quarter panel there. And uh, it gets wrecked. Andretti's still flipping. Yeah. Big wreck. Going to get a better view of the John Andretti part here at the tail end. I mean, this is just... Yeah, it just reminds me so much of Kurt Busch in our 05, the very first video we put on the channel for NR, uh, when he went through the infield there at Daytona. Slid in on his roof, caught the grass, and went airborne. Big, big tumble. Crazy way to finish the uh, the brickyard this season. A couple on boards. The first on board is with Robbie Gordon. Because he's going to follow me. Yeah, hole fills up. Nowhere to go. I can't recall, but this is Martin Truick's view. I can't recall though if him and Junior got through it clean or not. Truix did. Wow. Gonna take one last view from John Andretti's point of view here. Wow, that it just happened so fast. And for a second there, it looked like he just froze. All I saw was blacktop, and then. Big tumble. Well, my top 20 prediction was a little bit ambitious, it looks like. But, uh. Yeah, so last time at the line we were 25th, and the only other car ahead of us, I guess a lot of the cars who crashed were behind us already. Uh, Logano's out, Menard's out, Andretti's out, Orange is out, Robbie Gordon's out. Um, Logano wasn't ahead or behind us, he was ahead of us. Um, and Clint Boyer's out, so we'll pick up, I think, one spot here. But Jimmy Johnson is going to get the win here in the Brickyard 400, or the All Street 400. Uh, presented by the Brickyard, followed by Mark Martin, Tony Stewart, Greg Biffle, Brian Vickers, Jeff Gordon, Casey Kane, David Rudiman, Juan Montoya, Matt Kenseth. Uh, we pick up one spot from our starter position of 25th, so we'll finish 24th. Um, uh, Casey Kane, he's 10th in points. He's going to finish 7th. Um, Kyle and Kurt, they're in the back, so we're going to gain good points on them. Johnson. And Newman, um, where did Ryan finish? Ryan finished in four, 15th. So, yeah, they're going to pull on us. So, it looks like we have a shot at getting past two. So, that should get us, we should be getting closer to ninth in the points. Um, so, that's 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 a good thing. Um, that'll help give us a little bit of a buffer from, well, it doesn't even matter your spot. It just matters, you know, the points. But, that'll do it. Our next race will be on Wednesday at Pocono. So, uh, yeah, hope you all enjoyed this race. Uh, got a little wild there at the end. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you all for the love and support through likes, comments, subscriptions, etc. And until next time, have a good one.